Hey y'all, thank you for clicking on this video. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. For those of you that subscribe, welcome back. Real quick, before I get started on this one, I wanna apologize for that last video that I posted. It was from a couple of years ago. It wasn't my best work by far. It's just I wanted to get some of that old footage out. I've actually been out here hunting a couple times in the last week and a half. It's just the weather has been very uncooperative and therefore it was unsuccessful. I'll go into that a little more here in a little bit, but uh, just wanted to get some of that older footage out for you guys. Like I said, hopefully it was still entertaining, but uh, definitely wasn't my best work. Well, here we are the end of May. It's actually the 31st, which is my mother's birthday. So mom, if you're watching, happy birthday. I love you. I'll see you here real soon. And uh, like I said, it's the end of the month. It's extremely hot, 90 degrees today. However, the weather is a lot more cooperative than what it has been in the last few times I've been out here. Got a good southeast wind. It's gonna be about seven miles per hour right now. It's gonna drop down to about five right before dark. And uh, that should be a, a perfect wind for me for where I'm wanting to go this evening. I've had pigs coming in like clockwork every night around seven, between seven and eight o'clock. So I don't expect them to do anything different. They should come in. Hopefully they'll give me a shot and I get one on the ground for you. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting my gear packed up. I'll meet back up with you guys halfway in. I got some stuff I wanna discuss with you and go over. As always, if you want to fast forward the video to the shot, go ahead. I'll leave the time in the in the uh, description below. So you, those of you that don't like to hear me jabber on, y'all can fast forward through all this and just watch the kill scenes. But anyway, I'll see you guys here real soon. I'm just going to go ahead and get my gear done, get some water loaded in here because I'm going to need it. And I'll meet back up with you here shortly. Well, I try to keep the jabbering down to a minimum or at least only talk about things that I feel is important to you. So while I've got it on my mind, I want to talk a little bit about how I access my stand when I'm hunting these pigs. And for me, I tend to take the same approach on hunting these pigs as I do a big mature buck. I park a long ways off. Matter of fact, I park as far as I can. Here lately, I've been parking outside of our gate and walking in. According to Onyx, it's about 720 yards from where I park to my stand. Now that's a straight shot, so that's not taking into consideration of how far I'm fixing to walk around. And the reason I do that is because these pigs are pretty smart, believe it or not. And they pattern us as much as we try to pattern them. So whenever they hear our trucks driving in the gate, they will shut down and they will not come in. So therefore, I tend to park a long ways off and just walk in. Also, today, the wind is southeast, so I'm having to circle around, all the way around. Where I'm hunting is way over here. Where I've got to walk around is way over here. But that's what I'm gonna to have to do to get the wind in my face. You know, I heard once that bow hunting is a thousand little details, and if you miss just one, it could ruin your hunt. And I find that statement to be very, very true. So I try not to, I try not to skip any steps when I do this. And once I finally get to where I'm going, I'll get to my stand, climb up, and just wait. I do not like to get down. I do not like to mess with the feeder. And I do not like to put any scent around my stand or my, my uh, feeder that I don't have to. These pigs, if you get walking around your feeder, they will smell where you've been. You wanna keep the less is more attitude when you're hunting them. So when you go in, if your feeder's been throwing consistently, let it do its thing. Throw the corn that normally comes out. Don't, uh, don't try to put any extra bait out. Don't try to do anything that you don't normally do. Uh, what in my experience, by throwing out something that's a little bit different, it usually spooks them. So. Take the less is more approach. Get in there, get in your stand, get quiet. Don't lay a lot of scent around and just wait for the feeder and wait for the pigs just to come in. So hopefully that helps a little bit. I know it's kind of common sense to a lot of people, but for those of you that don't get a chance to get out and hunt these pigs much, like I said, they're one of the smartest animals I've ever hunted. And you really have to take an extra approach. Not to mention these little things will help you tremendously come fall whenever you're hunting those big bucks. So it's a win-win and hopefully it'll make you a little more successful. 
well I've had to walk a pretty good ways all the way around but I happen to have the wind in my face now it's actually blowing right into me my stand is going to be right inside that that clump of trees about 150 yards so the wind is going to be blowing right in my face which is exactly what you want going in turn the heat on. It is hot out here. Well, as you can see, I made it to the stand. Those of y'all that have watched my videos in the past, you're pretty familiar with this area. That feeder down there is at about 30 yards from this stand. It's a stand we call the money blind, and it's because it's always, it always tends to produce. Hopefully tonight it's no different. But uh, I made it in nice and quiet. Hopefully the pigs cooperate and they come in not from behind me. Uh, the last couple times I've been here, it has been almost no wind. And when you're pig hunting, the wind is your friend. And no wind is horrible. And that's the way it's been the last couple times. When you have no wind, the thermals push your scent down and it just disperses everywhere and so no matter where they come in a lot of times they'll pick you off if there's no wind so it's always good to have something consistent personally I'd rather have a bad wind than no wind but tonight should be a lot better I've got a pretty consistent wind at about five miles an hour right now it's out of the southeast hopefully the pigs don't come in from behind me which they have the last couple times and if they do again tonight, then I'm going to have to switch things up, move my stand somewhere. But I don't know. Hopefully uh, everything works out. I'm going to sit here. It's at about, it's about 645 right now. The feeder don't go off until 730. The pigs have been showing up between 7 and 8. So any time now. But now it's just a waiting game to sit here and see. And hopefully they come in and give me a shot. He's dead. 
dead, not even 20 yards from the feeder. I hit him perfect, and he circled around, and he died, not even 20 yards from the feeder right there. Man, that grave digger. You know, the penetration probably wasn't the best, but it went in far enough to get everything it needed to. And I'm pretty sure I heart punched him. And it's still early. So I'm going to sit here and hopefully wait for, who knows, maybe a few more to come out. But we got one on the ground. That was awesome. perfect those pigs came in upwind so they never smelt me or the other pig I shot but that was that group that that usually comes in and I just picked a big mature sow out of the bunch it looked like the other one was pregnant uh, the one I shot looks like she had already either had her babies or she wasn't so I decided to shoot her but she gave me a perfect shot and I just drilled her I don't think she made it 30 or 40 yards inside the wood line. I heard her crash thrashing around. So it's been a great evening already. That was at 7.30. As you guys seen, the feeder went off while the pigs were there. And uh, I didn't spook them too bad. They decided to stick around and that was a bad thing. But I picked out a big mature sow. The other one looked pregnant. So I picked out the one that didn't and I just drilled her. But it worked out great. They came in upwind. They didn't smell me. They didn't smell the pig that I shot earlier. He fell downwind of the feeder. So everything worked out great. I've still got one more pig that I've been seeing. It's a spotted boar. I hadn't seen him yet this evening. So I'm just going to go ahead and sit here. And maybe he'll show up. But I'll sit until dark. Or maybe those pigs will come back. I'm not real sure. But either way, got two down.
inside the woods. Oh man, what an evening. That was another lone boar. And I still haven't seen the spotted boar yet. Golly, I shot that pig with that iron wheel, 200 grain. And it went through him and bounced up. I don't even know if I'll ever find that arrow, but I'm gonna really look for it. Oh man, what an evening. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've shot three pigs in one setting. Wow. I'm just gonna sit here. As long as they keep coming, <laughs> I'm gonna keep shooting. sit here and try to get another one but I'd like to do somewhat of a recovery while it's still daylight for you guys so I think I'm just gonna gather my gear up and try to find all these pigs and my arrows and hopefully recover the broadhead especially that iron wheel because that thing's expensive but uh, yeah I'm gonna go ahead and get down try to get these things found and give you a good recovery all right, well, I know where the first pig is. He didn't make it very far at all. And I'm actually surprised that when that third pig came in, he didn't get spooked by this pig laying here. young boar and he broke my arrow like I heard so we know where he's at I'm gonna try to find my arrow real quick and I'll go back to the feeder and start blood trailing well no luck finding that arrow it's gonna be like a needle in a haystack I saw it bounce off the rocks and take off but once it hit up in these trees, I don't know where it went after that. So let's go look after, try to find pig two and three. Oh man, there's a, a bunch of pigs right here. Damn, they were coming in if I'd have just waited a little bit longer. Man, I've had pigs on me all night long. This is one of the best hunting nights I've had in forever. Looks like this was pig number two. There's my arrow. Everything's intact. From pig number two. This is actually pig number one, I believe. Well, here's a dead pig right here. See, I got <laughs> great blood. Pig number three. That was a young boar that came in last. Let's see if I can't find pig number two. Well, I found two out of three. That second pig I shot, that big sow, I have no idea where she went. I couldn't find a lot of blood because. The only blood that I found was at the feeder and I couldn't tell which pig it was from, whether it was from the second or third one. But I grid searched back in there for a ways 
at least for the past 45 minutes to an hour, I've just been grid searching, going down every trail that I could look at, or every trail that I could make out, and no luck. So, I'm gonna head back to the truck while I still got a little bit of daylight. Enjoy this beautiful sunset, bring it back and get these other ones loaded up. And then I'll give it a, a quick once over and try to find her. But these pigs are tough. And even when you hit them exactly where you need to, they run a long ways. There's a, another video that I put out not too long ago where I shot a pretty good boar. And I'll leave it up here up top so you can check it out. But I shot that pig pretty much double lung and he went a long ways. So it happens as part of it. But I'm going to get at least these two because I found them right off. They didn't go 20 yards from the feeder. And get them loaded and I'll uh, meet back up. But I got my work cut out for me. So I'll see you here shortly. Looks like I've got a coyote out there. If my camera will focus. Oh man able to enjoy another beautiful sunset. I always like these hunts where I can get it done early so I can get down and enjoy this walk out without having to walk out in the pitch black dark. But the moon is almost full. Right above my head there you can kind of make it out. Just another awesome hunt, awesome day. One of the best hunts I've had in a long time. And mm, it's been a great day. Here is pig number one. And yep, he broke that arrow. Damn it. That arrow had two kills on it already. I'm not gonna get a third. Let's look and see. Ooh, yeah, we got lung hanging out. So that broadhead did a number. But that's that's where you want to hit them. Low armpit, right by the elbow. His elbow's right here. This is the area. If you heart punch them they're not gonna go far and that's exactly what happened to him he got he got hit lung and heart this pig was hit with the iron wheel double lung that's entrance And looks like maybe high exit. Yep, exit's right here. So a little higher than that other pig. Personally, I prefer to hit them lower here. But that one did the job. Well, I probably don't need to tell you just how good this evening was. I was able to find two out of three. I couldn't find that second pig. I shot that big sow. Uh, not real sure what happened there. I looked for her for a couple hours and never never did find her. Uh, never found blood. Of course, when you shoot a lot of pigs like that, there's blood everywhere and it's hard to pick out just one single blood trail. But once I got out away from them, I started to grid search and I just, I just, I couldn't find her. So that happens sometimes. These pigs are tough animals. Uh, they have a lot of fat on them and when you shoot them with a broadhead a lot of times that will seal up around that and it's, they're just really hard to locate but all in all it was a great great evening as you can tell i mean it was just pig after pig and let's talk about that for one second of why that happened the way it did these pigs used to all be part of one big group there was a group of about 25 or 30. matter of fact the the sow that i shot that group used to be a lot larger these pigs used to be in that group 
And as these boars have grown to maturity, they either wander off on their own or these sows will kick them out of that group. It's kind of nature's way of, of keep the inter, interbreeding from going on. Uh, a lot like when whitetails, you know, you'll see does kick those buck fawns off uh, around, around breeding time. And that's just to get them out of there. That way they don't interbreed. But uh, a lot of that happens with pigs also. And so all these boars were part of that big group. And now that they're on their own, they're just kind of wandering in at different times. And that's why I was able to get shot after shot after shot. Uh, these pigs just came in on their own. And luckily, they each came in with, a, with the right wind tonight. Uh, I did get busted towards the end there. I could have shot a, uh, a fourth one, but I had some come in from downwind and they spooked off. And then as I got down and I was looking for these pigs, as you guys seen, I ran other pigs off. I think that group was coming back in. So a lot of times when you're bow hunting these pigs, if you'll just sit still, they'll keep coming. And if you're shooting a quiet bow like I do, uh, you can just pick them off one after another and it just makes for a really fun, good evening. But as you guys seen, uh, it was a great, great hunt. I hadn't had a hunt like this since a couple years ago when I did a video. I entitled it Pig Slaughter on the River. I think I shot four pigs on that set, but uh, this was by far the best hunt I've had since then. And it's been a long time since I've shot doubles and a really long time since I've gotten a triple. So hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a, a lot of fun. Please hit that subscribe button. Um, if you want to know when I upload videos, hit the notification bell. You'll get alerts every time I upload one of these. And thanks again for following. And hopefully you guys will see me again here real soon on my next hunt.